All right, Neil, um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Now, there was an exercise 19 that um, asked you to uh, look up stuff on model view controller. It's, it's well worth your, uh, the time spent on just, you know, Googling it and, and, and reading more about it. Um, but since that's a reading exercise and not really a programming exercise, I'm going to skip ahead. So um, let's see. Exercise. Actually, you know, let me let me just go over a little bit of the text first that comes before exercises uh, 20 through 22. Um, so in this in this section, we we have a discussion about cohesion of classes, and right here on the side it says class cohesion. A, a co cohesive class represents one well-defined entity. And that entity, well, yeah, class cohesion is the cohesion of a class. It says the rule, but you can also have, you know, good cohesion of, of methods. Um, you know, what, what, you want to have methods that just do one well-defined thing. Um, so anyway, this says the rule of cohesion of classes states that each class should represent one single well-defined entity in the problem domain. As an example of class cohesion, we now discuss another extension to the Zool project. We want to add items to the game. So each room can hold an item, and each item has a description and a weight. A description and a weight. So that means we're going to have two instance variables in our item class. One of them is going to be description, and one of them is going to be weight. An item's weight can be used later to determine whether it can be picked up or not. A naive approach would be to add two fields to the room class, item description and item weight. This could work. We could now specify the item details for each room and we could print out the details whenever we enter a room. This approach, however, does not display a good degree of cohesion. The room class now describes both a room and an item. It also suggests that an item is bound to a particular room. Right? So if you're storing the item description and the item weight in the room, that means that item is, there's one item and it's just in that room. Right? With that particular item description and that particular item weight. And we might not want this to be the case. We might want to be able to move items to another room. We might be, want to have more than one item in a room. A better design would be to create a separate class for items, probably called item. This class would have fields for a description and weight, and a room would simply hold a reference to an item object. Oh, so a reference to an item object. So we're going to have a class called item. So let's, well, let's look at the exercise. So it says, um, extend your adventure project or Zool project so you can have a single item. And I'm going to kind of skip this one because in exercise 22, we look at the case of having multiple items in a room, which I think is more what you want. And then exercise, so we'll skip over that one for now. Exercise 21 says, how should the information be produced about an item present in a room? How should the information about an item present in a room be produced? So if, if that item is present in that room, for all the items present in a room, the room should present the, um, the information about the items present, right? Just like... Um, command words was responsible for presenting the list of, for producing the list of command words, right? Because all the command words are stored here in this collection, right? So in room, we're going to make a collection of items. We're going to add in a collection of items, and the room is going to be responsible for producing information about those items. All right. um, what else? 
questions. Oh yeah, we're looking at these questions, right? Um, okay, so the room is going to be responsible for, for producing the that uh, string that describing the items, and then which class should produce the string describing the individual item? Okay, well that there should be. Um, a description. Well, we know already we're going to put a description field in the item class, right? Because they told us that's what we should do. Well, so the item class is going to return that string with the, with the description, right? Now, which class should print it? Remember, just like with command words, we decided we're going to push all the print lens up into the game um, class. That's what we're going to do uh, here, too. And the reason why um, if you followed the discussion earlier in the chapter, the idea is, you know, what if we decide later on that we want to have a, a really nice, you know, GUI interface instead of just having things printed to a, a console? Then we'll have all our, you know, um, all, all, all our methods that um, do the printing in one class so we just have to worry about making changes in that one place. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to skip this exercise 20 and, and go on to 22 to um, make a version so it can hold any number of items. So the first thing we want to do is make our, our item class. So, and it says right here, a better design would be to create a separate class for items, probably called item. This class would have fields for description and weight. And a room would simply hold a reference to an item object. So, let's do that. Let's make fields for description and weight, and we'll make a reference uh, in the room. We'll, we'll make our references to our item object. And actually, we're going to have be able to have multiple item objects in a room, so we'll, we'll need to have a collection of item objects. Okay, so let's go to make a new class. I'm going to call it item. We're going to have two um, fields instance variables. So we're going to have a field for a description. That'll want to be a string, right? And then we'll have a, a field for a weight. And that Seems like it makes more sense to make that an int, right? So, um, let's see. Oh, so I cleared out. I got rid of that x variable, so we don't have that anymore. And I'm going to get rid of this sample method. Just make sure that compiles. And then I'm going to have my... Um, my reference to item I'm going to have in room. So um, we need to have some kind of, um, in our item, we need to have some way to um, get that description out, right? And we're going to need um, the weight as well. So what, what you know, a common thing, we just have these, these two um, instance variables. A common way to um, initialize, to, to set up our constructor, is to um, set it up so that when we create a new item, we just automatically give it our... Oh, you know, weight might be better as a double. Because then that way, if you want to have, like, you know, 1.5 pounds or something like that. And then um, we can just initialize our instance variables right up here in our constructor. Description. 
description, description, and this weight equals weight. Okay. So I uh, remember that what the this does is it says um, I'm going to pass a variable and it says when you say this dot description, it means I'm talking to the instance variable for this class. Okay. But when description doesn't have a this dot in front of it, it's just um, referring to this local parameter here. So we're setting the instance variable description is getting loaded with whatever value got passed as a parameter. And the same idea with weight. Okay. So then we should also have um, something that um, returns. Oh, so I always forget. When to a, a back, the way you want to comment these things is with the slash star star, because um, uh, the way um, Java Docs works. So return items weight, which we don't need to talk about right now, but it's um, good good to get in the habit of using um, slash star star uh, in front of your um, you know for comments in front of your your uh, methods or just above your methods so let's say public that uh, double right we're going to return a double and in fact one of the ways you can tell your constructor right is you don't have a return type you just have public and then the name of the class in your constructor. So this is a method. So we're going to say get weight. And we're going to say return weight. And then we'll do another one for the description. Return a description of the time. Of the item, sorry, of the item. And that is return. The description. Okay. And similar idea. Public, we're returning a string. Because our so our, our description is a string. We're gonna return the description. That means we need to return a string. Description return description. Okay. What I forget? Oh, I forgot my semicolon here. And I just got done telling you that, didn't I? So the er, the statements in the white rectangles need the semicolons. So now we have our item. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to store multiple items in our room class. So um, there are different um, possible collections we could use. We could use, you know, array list or um, um, you know a, a fixed length list like the uh, the one in command words. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a hash set. And the reason I'm using a set is that way I make sure that um, I only have one of a partic particular item, that I don't have mul can't put multiple copies of the same item in, in a room. Okay. Um, so, that. Oh, that won't compile. So look right here. It says, cannot find symbol, class hash set. If I click on this question mark, it says you're using a symbol. Check the spelling, blah, blah. Okay. So for classes, when you see cannot find symbol class, typically what that means is you need to import the, um, the class up here. So I'm going to say import, and I... Um, and if you're not sure what um, package a, a class belongs to, you can go to Java class libraries and look up 
hash set. And it tells you right here it's in the Java util package. Okay, or you can also see right here, Java util hash set. In fact, sometimes what I'll do is just copy from there. Okay, and so now when I compile, there we go. Okay, so um, with collections, um, you remember one of the things that's really important to do is initialize, initialize it. So um, see how we have this exits equals new hash map. Um, we need to do the same kind of thing with our our list of items. Because um, otherwise, if we try to do something like, um, you know, add an element to it, what happens is we'll get a null pointer exception. It's going to say because there's no list um, of items to point to. Okay. So, oh, so I'm going to say items equals new hash set item. Okay. So I'm, I'm making a set of items, so I'm going to store all my items in this room. Okay, and what I do? Oh yeah, I forgot my parentheses. So, um, so basically, whenever you do a new, when you create, a, you use a, a constructor, like if I was going to, I don't know, just for kicks, if I was going to create a new parser, say. Um, you, you put the name of the class and then the parentheses. And if the constructor requires any uh, parameters, you put, you put those parameters in there, too. So it's the same thing with these, um, like things like, hash map and hash set even though they have these these brackets to tell you what kind of um, information is being stored what kind of objects are being stored in the hash map you still need the um, parentheses okay so now that's compiled okay good so now um, what I need to do is I need for the room to be able to um, uh, tell me what uh, what items it has, right? To give me a description of the items. So um, we can kind of look down here because I have this get exit string. We can do something very similar for items. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy um, this method since I am doing something very similar. Um, and no, when I say it's very similar, we're, we're building up a string of exits, and this is kind of what we did with command words also. We're building up a string of exits here. So what I want to do for my, you know, get item string is I want to build up a string of items. Okay, so I'm going to have to go through a... Um, a list, but I'm not going through. So here we got a key set. Actually, what I'm looping through is um, I'm looping through my hash set. So, well, first of all, I want to start this. I want to call this get item string, right? I'm going to get a string of items. And for my prompt, I want to say items instead of exits, right? Um, and what I want to do here, well, so here, for because um, exits is from a uh, a hash map that has a string and a room, okay. So a hash map is kind of like a dictionary of of words. This this string attaches to this basically. To assign, you know, to relate this string to this room, we use a map. So it's kind of like a dictionary 
you, you use this um, string to look up what room you have. For a hash set, we just have single item um, objects, okay? So we gotta treat these a little bit differently. So there's no such thing as a key set, for example, for items. But we do have items itself is already a hash set. So if we, we might be able to get away with something like this if we said um, so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm, I'm making a definition I'm gonna say take this this collection of items that I have and one at a time load them into the um, this reference here for a single item and I'm going to use that um, in what follows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return string plus a space plus item, because I'm referring to this single item, dot get description. So now I can get the description for that guy. And let's see if this compiles. Okay, so that compiles. So now how can we test this? Well, currently we don't have well, well, oh, well. Yeah, currently we don't have any items in the room, right? So we would have to um, maybe. Well, we we have to have a way of adding items to the room. So let's let's do that first, and then we'll we'll try doing some testing. So let's make a method to put um, items in the room. Put an item into this room. Okay. I'm going to find a method. Look void add item. And it's going to add one item at a time. And what we want is we want to add our item to this hash set. Right? We have a, a hash set and we're going to add um, it's uh, called items. That's the name of our variable. So we're going to add that one item to this hash set items. So let's take a look. Um, we have hash set up here already. How do you add a particular object to that collection? You use the add uh, method. And notice what it says here. It says adds the specified element to the set if it is not already present. Okay, so that's the nature of a hash set. With an array list, it'll it'll always add um, to the array list, even if it's already present in the array list. Okay, so and then here's more detail if you want, but that's the basic idea. We need to use add, and then this e business right here is the um, whatever the generic type, the type that we um, said we're going to have in our hash set. So in our hash set we have, we're storing item objects, okay? So we have this list of item objects. So we're gonna add a new item object to our, our hash set called items. So on this object called items, we just saw, we can call the method add, and we can pass it an item because we, we set it up to be item like that. All right, so I'm going to hit compile. It looks like that, that worked. Okay, so we need to um, add individual items to, uh, to the room. So, it's mm, a good way to do this. You know, what we might do is just go ahead and um, what if we create a test class here. What does that give us? What we could do in here is um, just create a, a new room and give it um, and give it some uh, some items. So let's say room you know let's make an actually let's make an instance variable room so we can refer to it. 
So I'm going to say room room equals new. Now I want to check my constructor to make sure that's a valid constructor for room. So I'm going to go here and say, no, actually I need a description for the room. So what's, and it has to be a string. So I'm going to say new room lab, let's say. Okay. So we're creating a new room that's a lab. And now we want to add some items to that room. So let's say, uh, well, let's we need to do that in the constructor here. So let's say uh, room. And now remember to add an item to the room, it's this, in the room class, it's this add item method, right? So I'm going to say add item. And I can just create a new room right, oops, right here, a new item right here. New item. I think item needs some needs description and uh, weight, right? Yeah. So a new item needs a description and a weight. So I'm going to say, okay, new item. Uh, bowling ball. Say that's 20 pounds or whatever. And um, then let's add something else. Add item, new item, lamp, say fox, something like that. Okay. So then um, for our test, let's see. Well, I'm trying to remember how we do the test thing. There's a nice uh, video on how to um, how to run tests. Um, that is at. tjleoni.com Java Honors It's one of the earlier pages, like maybe one or two, I think. First example from the book. Anyway, it's one of these early on ones, it says something about tests. Ah, oh, here it is. Yeah, using the unit test tool. So it's on, uh, it's in the unit four videos. But, um, and I can't remember now what's the best way. But I think what I'm just going to do is. Um, so this might not be the smartest way to do this, but I'm going to just say public void, uh, let's say print, uh, what is that, print item string. And I'll just say um, let's say system dot out dot print um, what's it called? Get um, item string. I'm missing a parentheses here. Yeah. Oh, do I not call it get item string? Oh, items string. Get 
find that big gap. Oh, because it's got to be on the room object, right? Now, get items. Oh, you know what? I think I made it private. So let's make sure. Yeah, I made it private. I'm going to just make it public so I can test it. Cannot find. Oh. So let's see if I can. Oh, create test method. Okay. So let's say test get item string. Oh, that's no way to do it. So. Say add item. Ah, oh, this is how you do it. Okay. New item. Um, bowling ball, comma, 20. Oh. Wait. Yeah. Bowling ball, comma, 20, right? Because that's the thing that I want to add. Yeah. Let's see if that works. All right, let's add another one. Add item, new item, ramp, number five, okay. All right, and then, um, get, Uh, get item string. Oh, look at that. Bowling ball, bowling ball, lamp, lamp. I think that's because we, uh, oh, that's because we added it in the constructor. Oh, and you haven't entered expected results. Hmm. Okay, well, it looks like I need to go back and read up on this, uh, uh, test stuff. But I, I recommend that you um, take a look at the, uh, the whole testing, unit testing thing in here. This is really helpful. I'm just rusty on it. But um, assert that result is equal to, and actually what we want really is items Bowling ball uh, lamp, let's say. Oh, I think I originally original, I like this. Okay. And then let's end it. And let's see. Because now, actually, now it's been put into the... So this was not the way to do it. Really, it was this. And since I... I have these at things added in the constructor. I'm not going to put this here either. Okay, so I'm going to compile this. And now I can test. Ah, now I can test that. And it succeeded. Cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that was the long way around. But we now have our, um, our items uh, working in, in room. It looks like at least our, our get um, item string is working right. Now what we got to do is um, go into the game class. Remember the game class is ultimately where everything is going to get printed out. Um, 
So, let's see. And we're actually, you know what we should do probably is put the item string in the description of the room. So let's do that. So let's say in our in our get long description of the room, let's um, stick the put a carriage return and stick our item list on here. Get items string right there. What did I do? Oh, I forgot to put a plus. Okay, so now that compiles. Um, and then we'll use that in our, so that'll be our, um, our, um, in our, wherever we do our uh, printing out of the room stuff. So here, yeah, so current room, get long description. So now actually, because we just, we just changed this method, now wherever this gets called, we should just see the, the list of items. Right. So that gets called in print welcome and in go room. Okay. So, um, but that means we need to add some items in here, right? So, uh, let's see what kind of items do we want to do. So let's go over here. Um, oh. Pub add item. Let's just add some new items. New item. Uh, and remember, we we have doubles now, so we can add in whatever we want. Well, I don't think I want you drinking beer. How about soda? Cheese. Let's see. Zero point seven five. And then to the lab, we can add an item. Can do thirty. Uh, let's let's add something to the theater to theater. Add item, new item. What does the theater have? Curtain. And that's, ugh, that's really heavy. That's 100 pounds. And how about the office? Add item, new item, lamp. And that's uh, 1.2 pounds. Let's see if that compiles. Okay, so now um, when we play our game, we should see uh, the pub should have soda and cheese, and the lab should have a computer, the theater should have a curtain, and the office should have a lamp in it. So let's take a look. Game play. Okay, so um, oh, in the entrance we didn't add anything, so we don't have any items there. So it just says items with nothing after it. So now if we say, oops, let's say go, we go south. If we're in the lab, we have a computer. So go uh, east. Uh, in the admin office, we have a lamp, and so on, okay? So, um, that's the implementation of um, 622.